All right, hey, hey, y'all, welcome back to All Cars. I'm John, and it is time for another retro review from Motor Week, a reaction video. This time, one that I have been waiting to do for a long time, Pontiac Aztec. This is a 2001 review of the Pontiac Aztec, one of those vehicles that is the most loved to be hated, right? And I find this vehicle so fascinating because it represents honestly in a lot of ways the best and the worst of pre-bankruptcy General Motors. On the one hand, the to complete and utter dysfunction, a vehicle that looked like it was designed by committee of where you can imagine the car guys and the engineers being overruled by a management that really didn't care about cars and ending up with something that looked like a Frankenstein monster. On the other hand, it was filled with a lot of really good ideas and in some ways predates the current move to these active lifestyle vehicles that we're seeing. Certainly when you think about uh, the EV maker canoe that's coming out with something that looks like an old VW bus, but they're making it camping related. The Aztec was kind of doing this, but it's this hodgepodge of horrid stuff, such as taking a minivan platform and a minivan engine and putting it together into a SUV that was just hideously ugly. And unfortunately, I want to make excuses for it and say that it was just so early the formula hadn't been cited, you know, decided yet, but that's not true. The RAV4 and the CRV, for example, both came out before it did. So kudos to them for trying to do something. In some ways, they kind of saw where people were going to use their SUVs, but they ended up with something that became an absolute butt of jokes. And I truly believe the only reason a lot of people outside the auto field, even though it exists, is because of Breaking Bad. So let's see what they said about it when it was brand new. Made possible by Rock Auto, Tire Rack, and Die Hard. That does not look like 2001 graphics. Hello and welcome again to Motor Week. We're glad to have you with us. With the explosive takeoff of sports utility vehicles, we're now seeing new creative variations on the theme, most often called crossover vehicles. Part SUV, part minivan, and part car. And with them come new acronyms like SAV for sports activity vehicle, or MAV for multi-activity vehicle. All to try and convince buyers that they're more than just another SUV. Well, one of the newest and most intriguing of these whatchamacallits comes from Pontiac, and they're calling their new Aztec crossover an SRV for Sport Recreation Vehicle. Is this more of the new name, same old thing game? Well, not if you take the 2001 Aztec's wild styling into account, because this Pontiac Aztec certainly doesn't look like anything else on the road. This sport recreation vehicle may be related to the Montana minivan and Grand Prix sedan, but the Aztec takes Pontiac's already aggressive look to a whole new abstract level. A people mover with edgy fender top turn signals and ram air hood. So love it or hate it, the only two reactions that we've heard so far, you have to admit that the folks at Pontiac aren't afraid to try something new. And that's the point of Aztec. As GM's first true crossover vehicle, it's aimed... Let's... Oh, God, let's stop there. Um, there's so much wrong here. Um, uh, I don't even know where to start. It's uh, a car, SUV, minivan, hatchback wagon, sports car based on a, a minivan. I just The fact that there are committees in General Motors that looked at this, um, clay models, uh, CAD designs, mock-ups, and that they convinced themselves this was edgy, Art Deco, it was going to be a winner because they were pushing the boundaries. The body cladding, 
uh, just, you know, bad GM, let's throw some body cladding on it, but at least it says active, right? The fact that they put those amber turn signals on top and then those little headlights below in the bumper, I mean, it reminds me of the Chevy Colorados where it looked like the grill was installed upside down. They did the Ram Air hood, but then right there at the edge, it looked like the hood just never closed properly. It, just ugly and at the back you know kind of having that sloping hatchback so it's not a minivan it's not a station wagon but it still cuts into the cargo space and then it just chops off at the end this looks like a pre-production like this is the beta version and they needed to go continue to refine it from here but this is what they actually put out there um, I, I, I've talked to people who have these that absolutely love them, that it fit the need, it did what it was supposed to do, but man, I, I it, it boggles my mind that this thing made it out of committee as the design that was signed off on. Aimed at buyers that don't typically shop the general, young, hip, with very active lifestyles. The Aztec is billed as an extremely versatile vehicle that can change its ability as quickly as its owners change their minds. Take, for example, the rear treatment of the Aztec. It's a combination glass, hatch, and tailgate. One or both can be left open to carry anything from mountain bikes to sheets of drywall. Indeed, the wide, flat cargo bay is cavernous, and with the rear seats flipped and folded, it's larger than any compact or midsize SUV. It sports cargo nets, 12 tie-downs, or this optional slide-out cargo tray with handy compartments fit for grocery bags and hiking boots. People are treated equally as well with even more of the room and flexibility that's expected from any minivan or SUV-based vehicle. Okay, I, I do apologize to everybody. I can't have the words and not have this Euro techno music at the same time just pounding at a frenetic pace. Uh, but let's pause it and talk about the interior here. Um, I guess there's two ways to look at it. Is it bad GM cost-cutting cheap plastics or is it GM actually purposefully using plastics that are easy to clean and uh, I'll let you decide on that. The thing, I've said it before, these gray bubulous knobs and buttons that Pontiac used always looked the cheapest of anything out there. I don't care how they functioned. They're cheap. They're just, the, the gray knobs just disgust me. And I have a personal and very strong primal dislike of circular vents. Just Oh, it drives me up the wall. So there's a lot of things about this I don't like, but you know, they've got the grab handle here. The rest of it looks laid out. It actually looks like a really functional, uh, relatively well laid out interior. Guess that's all I got to say about it. It looks fine. The Pontiac style dash of bumps and rounded binnacles is more video game than people mover, but it does include a clear gauge package and pictograph warning lights with standard trip computer on the Aztec GT. The front bucket seats are supportive with either trendy cloth or two-tone leather upholstery, both covering standard side impact airbags. Visibility is very good with the all glass hatch eliminating traditional minivan SUV rear blind spots view that is a fantastic view out the rear you know so often when you think about like the old crv um I think it was the crv that has a glass and then a little piece of glass and you end up with this thick bar and you just really can't ever see anything that's fantastic there's lots of small item storage including the gt's removable console cooler and carry away front door utility packs you can haul yourself into the aztec with this big dash grab handle and stay comfortable with super simple climate controls with the GT adding dual zone and a pollen filter. Stereo systems really take off in Aztec. The top system includes a six disc N-Dash CD changer. Premium units also feature a 10 speaker, 190 watt Pioneer speaker system designed for good sound inside and outside with these rear controls and speaker units. To further the party on mentality is a tailgate with molded in seats and cup holders. 
The normal rear seat is minivan roomy. Standard is a 50-50 split removable bench with a pair of captain's chairs optional. All this room is courtesy to both the shortened 108.3 inch Montana wheelbase and Pontiac signature wider track, both front and rear. Axles end with 15 inch all season tires on the base front drive Aztec, while the GT and all wheel drive models use 16 inch touring rubber. All spun up by a proven power plant, GM's 3.4 liter 12 valve pushrod V6. An Aztec trim and makes 185 horsepower and 210 pound feet of torque delivered through a smooth column shift four-speed automatic transaxle oh wait a minute here okay so the engine not bad you know 3.4 liter from gm not great horsepower but i do like the fact that it's a more active vehicle with a higher torque rating that's nice get a little more grunt down below they said it was a column shift but wasn't it in the floor um that's that's confusing i might need to go back and take a look at that nothing wrong with the hardware it's just boring hardware and certainly in a world where you have CRVs and RAVs 4s you know working with four cylinders here comes GM having a need of V6 to do basically the same thing this combo also provides up to 3,500 pounds of towing capacity. And the front drive Aztec we drove at the Lake Tahoe press intro, it was good for a zero to 60 time of 9.4 seconds. Though it will be traction over speed that attracts buyers to Aztec. All speed traction control is available on front drivers, while a new full-time Versatrack all-wheel drive system will arrive in January 2001. The compact Versatrack system uses twin G-rotor pumps and multi-plate clutch packs instead of viscous couplings to distribute power both front to back and side to side. With Versatrack, up to 70% of engine torque can be seamlessly channeled to a single rear wheel. In simplest terms, if you have traction at one rear wheel, you shouldn't get stuck in an Aztec. On our first... Okay, that was pretty awesome. I've never seen that before. An Aztec hauling a CRV backwards. That was cool. That was that. That's pretty strong right there. Um, granted, you also had a V6 doing it, but uh, that that's that was a good demonstration. Drive around the Lake Tahoe region. The Aztec showed itself to be quiet, agile, and more pleasant to drive than its in-your-face styling suggests. The shorter wheelbase gives it a tighter feel than a typical minivan or SUV, as Aztec is nearly as nimble as its styling suggests. Front plow was modest until pushed hard, and the power rack and pinion steering had good feel, especially on center. These comments apply only to the front-wheel drive model with its strut front twist-beam rear suspension. Versatrack models get an all-new aluminum cradle independent short long-arm rear suspension that promises even more cornering prowess. Rear load leveling is optional on Aztec and includes an onboard air inflator. Braking is by well-sized front disc and rear drums on front drivers, four-wheel disc on all-wheel drive versions. All come with Bosch four-channel ABS, and Pontiac expects lining life of 100,000 miles. To break an Aztec at the end of your driveway, expect to pay $22,545 for a base Aztec. For a GT, the bottom line is $25,545. We think the all-wheel drive model will go for about a grand more. With its out-of-the-box styling and impressive versatility, the 2001 Pontiac Aztec is not just more of the same old thing. It is a genuinely different approach to the crossover concept, pardon us, sport recreation vehicle concept, and one that says a lot about GM's determination to shake its stodgy image. But is the buying public really ready for Aztec? Well, ready or not, it's here. Oh, wow. So what's funny is that's actually a seven-minute uh, retro review. Um, I've seen several recently that have been um, closer to six minutes, but that felt so fast because of that obnoxious loud music the entire time. I apologize, guys. I couldn't do anything about it. Really good review and really hits a lot of the strengths that I've heard many times about this vehicle. It's the fact of the matter is it's not bad. It, it never handled great, right? The, the minivan chassis and that engine, it never handled sporty, right? It was not the sport in a sport activity vehicle, but it was full 
of good ideas. And there's a lot in there that's honestly super, super impressive from the grab handle, from the big knobs for the HVAC or turning the lights on that you see um, a move into with trucks with bigger knobs for when you're wearing gloves. The backs of the seats covered in plastic. You see that in some cheaper stuff, of course, but they at least thought about it where you could throw your muddy gear in there, you could throw your tent in there, you could put your mountain bike in there and not tear up some cloth. There was a tremendous amount, even that little silly, silly little cooler that went in the middle, the power point at the back, load leveling suspension, being able to get all wheel drive on it. There was so much really right here, but it's like they threw the stylist out of the room and a bunch of suits and and maybe engineers came up with this design. You know, that back glass and the vertical glass to give you an increased view, but still have a cavernous area. It had a larger cargo space than midsize SUVs. Think about that for a minute. In a lot of ways, this was a very presentient vehicle cutting edge, filled with stuff, and in many ways, when you look at that level of attention to what the consumer actually would want and use the vehicle for, it feels like it's not GM. This feels like the stuff that Toyota, Honda, VW would have come up with, not General Motors. It's an exciting vehicle Boring to drive if you could just get past the styling. And I and most other people can't. And like I said, I can't get over that that thing at some point had to be a mock-up where a committee got together and said, that's it. That's going to be a hit. I appreciate that they probably convinced themselves, groupthink themselves, that they were cutting edge and they were going to set a new path for the smaller mid-size sport utilities of that era. But nobody either raised their hand and said, or they were ignored if they did, said, guys, this thing's ugly. The proportions are wrong. It's narrow and it's long and it's it looks like a really long Pontiac vibe, right? But that had more style. I, I, this, the vehicle makes me sad. That's what it boils down to. GM, of course, we know uh, seven years later, I guess, eight years later, um, declared bankruptcy. Uh, Pontiac ended up being closed. Um, they had to shake up everything and slim down and streamline. And in many ways, this has become a poster child that I think is not earned of the failure of General Motors. There's so much right here and a few dramatic decisions and you end up with one of the most <laughs> infamous, not lemons, but infamous failures and something that in many ways represents all that was wrong with pre-bankruptcy General Motors. It's such a shame because I'm here to tell you different styling refine that styling out a little bit, make it a little more conventional, and they have a home run on their hands. I believe that in my heart. That car was that close and one good styling committee away from being an absolute sensation. And I'd like to know your thoughts on that, guys. If you think I'm completely full of it and I'm wrong, let me know below. But if you see the goodness in this vehicle, share your comments below. Thanks, guys.